In today's video, I'm going to give you a full beginner's guide to VWO split testing. If you find this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe and let's get right into it. So first of all, what we need to do is go over to their website vwo.com and from here we're going to go ahead and sign up for a free account. To do that, you want to go to this button here that says try VWO for free. Go ahead and click on that. And then it's gonna ask you for some details. It's gonna ask you for your business email. You'll have to go ahead and accept it, press start now. And then it'll ask for a few more details, things like your name, phone number, and a few small details about your business. The setup is very easy in terms of that. They'll also send you an email to just confirm that you've put the right email in. And from there, you should be shown the dashboard. And this is what the dashboard actually looks like. You're going to have um, first of all your dashboard and we've got a lot of different things we can go ahead and set up. The first thing I would recommend doing is going down to the bottom and you'll see a section here that says configurations. Now on configurations you want to click on the drop down, go over to where it says websites and apps and then from here you probably want to go ahead and connect a website. So you can see it says connect your websites and apps. It's very easy to do this and they have a few different um, automatic integrations depending on what platform you're using. So if we're using a um, CMS such as uh, Shopify, for example, we can very easily connect it with their sort of built-in connector, which makes it very, very simple to use. You can also go here to this checkout integrations bit, and this is going to tell you all of the different integrations that they actually have, uh, which you can directly add here. And you can see they've got 54. So there's a chance that your platform is probably or potentially on here. But let's say we want to go ahead and connect one of them. We can go to this section here that says connect your website. And it's going to go ahead and ask us for a domain here. Now this will just allow them to uh, see what your website is built with. So if it's built on Shopify, they'll be able to automatically detect this. So as you can see, I've put a URL in here. What it's going to first of all do, it's going to analyze the URL. It's going to check the CMS. It's going to add the website. And now it's generating the smart code. We will now have to manually install this code onto our uh, Shopify. So you can see the steps to ins install the code are sign into the Shopify store, go to navigation bar, go to online store, uh, edit the code, and then basically we have to put this in the uh, theme.liquid file. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And now I've got Shopify open here. I'm going to go over to the edit code section here and I'm going to go down to the theme.liquid and I'm going to have to add it in here somewhere. I've just gone ahead and pasted it inside the head here. So you've got your head tag and then you've got your, well, you can just put it under the head tag. Uh, and I've just saved it there and now I'm going to go back onto the website and just see if it's set up properly. So I just put the URL in here, I press check and you can see smart code is correctly installed. Uh, so there we go. That's basically how you're going to set up the uh, website integration. It's very simple to do. Now, obviously, it changes depending on the platform, but it's all relatively an easy process. But this will now allow us to basically um, track our site and uh, use that to do split tests and just check our data, that kind of thing. Now, as I said, you can also use all of these different integrations here, uh, which make it a little bit easier. So if you want to connect up your um, Shopify this way, you can click on here and connect it, and they're going to be... You can enable it. There's going to be a slightly different process here, but it's all very simple and pretty user friendly. So now if we go back over to our dashboard, you're going to see there's a lot of different um, sort of fields that we can set up here. So first of all, we can set up a goal or we can set our goals up. So press set up goal and we can select the goal that we want to track. So we can do page visits, form submits, uh, track clicks on link, clicks on elements, track revenue or track custom conversion. Now I'm just going to keep it simple and do page visits. And it's just going to ask me here for my URL. I can go ahead and just submit the URL for the site. I'll just put it in like this. Uh, you can do the advanced one if you want. So you can have multiple URLs or you can exclude a URL. I'm just going to keep it simple with this for now. And we can also select the segments, but I'll speak more about this in a minute. We can go over to next. Uh, and then we want to enter a URL we want to define as an audience. So you can read about this if you want to. Uh, you can define it based on things to do with them. Um, I'll just put this in here. And now we can go ahead and start tracking it. We're now going to be able to, when we get a visitor, it's going to show us on here. Um, over, over time, it's going to, you know, the data is going to accumulate. And uh, obviously, you can do this for all the different types of goals you've got. So, as I said, we could do it with something like um, 
the revenue or the uh, clicks on an element. Now when you're using something like clicks on an element, you're going to have to go ahead into the HTML of your site or whatever and you're going to have to um, grab the CSS selector path just so you can track the right they're clicking on it. Um, but yeah, you can do this with other things and depending on the one you select, you might have to do a few custom fields like this. But it's pretty simple to set up a goal like that. Now something useful that VW actually has is they have this app and the app allows you to basically see if the campaigns are running effectively uh, on each different page of your site. So you can add it and then you can just see is it working basically. So the other things we have on our dashboard, we can set up a funnel. Um, so we can select a goal that we have. Uh, and we can go ahead and just see the percent of people that are going from one goal to another, for example. You have to have multiple goals for this, um, but it basically allows us to see the drop off. So if we want to have uh, from one page, for example, a product page, and we want to go ahead to the add to cart page or the cart page, we can go ahead and create that and just see the, where the drop offs are, uh, the percents and stuff like that. And it allows us to create two different pages. So if we wanted to create uh, two variations of a landing page, we can see what the percent of people dropping off is on each page, which is a really, really useful feature. So you can go ahead and create that up here. Now we also have our active tests here. So what we can do is we can set up a campaign here. We can create um, AV tests with the visual editor. Uh, we can use a split URL test, or we can use a multiple or a multivariate test really depends which one you want to use. Let's say we want to go ahead and do this this one here. Um, you can basically put this in here, save it, and then we can change, we can add a variation here. Uh, we open editor. And what we can do is we can go ahead and we can design and change the thing. So if we wanted to go onto here for a variation, we could um, we could edit the elements. Maybe we could change the text in it. We can uh, font size, colors, all of that kind of stuff. And it's going to basically add it in there. And it's quite useful. It works by editing the HTML essentially. So with that, we can go ahead and save and continue if we've made variations. We can go ahead and put the traffic split 50-50. And this will basically mean that now um, you'll be able to see the differences in the conversion rates, that kind of thing. What we can do is we can go down to metrics as well and we can set the primary metrics that we want to be looking at. So we can look at page visits, clicks, bounce rate, you know, depending on, you know, what you're trying to improve that element of the um, funnel, essentially. Um, you've also got, uh, but back to the dashboard again, so we've done goals, we've done funnels, we've done tests. You can create a hypothesis here. Um, this is more of like a brainstorming thing. So maybe you can say here, I expect that. So what is the solution to problem? Uh, what you're trying to do? So I expect that um, changing the add to cart button to green will increase the conversion rate because it's more trustworthy or something. And then we can go ahead and set our confidence scores, our importance, our ease, um, and basically do that there. We can put all the data in. And this is when we do stuff like the importance and confidence. Obviously, the ones that are going to make a huge difference, we'll put those first as like a priority. And then the ones that are like, you know, less confident and uh, probably won't make as much a difference, we'll put them as lower confidence and importance. So things like changing your uh, headlines are obviously going to be uh, more important than. Uh, changing your body text, for example, as your headlines will be a lot more important. Uh, but you can go ahead and create those, and those are really useful for just brainstorming ideas, essentially. Um, we have our personalizations here, so you can basically personalize it here. Um, and you can do it with a visual editor, so you can use like, I believe you can use like dynamic things based upon your audience, which is pretty useful. Go back to dashboard here. We've got our experiences, deployed experiences. So these are ones that we've gone ahead and actually done. Um, so these are ones that we've tested out and, you know, we can basically roll out a new experience on the uh, site, which is pretty useful. And then we also have down here our heat maps. So we can enable our heat maps and those are really, really useful. We can go ahead, let's just add this um, as our URL. Uh, we can select these ones if you want to, like a date range. If we view the heat map, it's going to go ahead, and obviously I've got no data on here, 
But what it will do is it will show us where people are clicking, where people are scrolling, where people are um, getting to and coming off, the frequently asked questions, all of that kind of stuff. And obviously this is very important when you're trying to see uh, what's making people drop off essentially. This can give you a good idea of it. Uh, these are very, very useful. So I'd recommend going ahead and actually using some of those. You've got your session recordings as well, which is equally as good as heat maps. This is kind of um, qualitative data, whereas heat maps is more quantitative. Um, you're going to be able to see the data all at once, whereas with the session recordings, you're going to have to watch them one by one, which isn't a problem. Uh, the data is going to be uh, easier to kind of interpret because you're going to literally see what people are doing. You'll be able to see where they're reading. And then you've also got tracking your forms and creating surveys on there. So that's basically all the things on the dashboard. Now, if you go onto the left hand side here, you're going to see all your different elements. So you've got our testing, you know, all of the AB stuff. We've got all of our insights here. Um, but essentially these widgets here, I'll just go more in depth on the things that we've covered on the dashboard. We've got, um, all of the our feature rollouts, our personalization, web rollouts. Uh, we have all of our data stuff here. So our segments, attributes, profiles, triggers, all of that kind of stuff here. As well as we've got our planning here. And then we have uh, all the, you know, the configurations that I just showed you here. Now, something else you can do, which is pretty cool. If you go up to the top right hand side, go to this little cog wheel here. Uh, you can go over to users and you're able to add different users to your account. So if you've got like some team members who are going to be uh, running the tests and stuff like that, you can go ahead and add these users to your account so that they can basically be employees and manage certain things. But that's basically a beginner's tutorial to VWO. It's a really amazing software to split test your sites or to split test uh, apps and that kind of thing. Um, if you found the video useful, please consider liking and subscribing and also let me know if you'd like me to cover this more in depth or any other topics and softwares like this. But if you enjoyed the video, um, uh, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.